It's such a big question to talk about what we're excited about, and there are so many things to be excited about. I think in each subgroup of uh, breast cancer, we may not have all those results by 2023 though. So I think we're looking for first in triple negative breast cancer, trying to improve outcome both in the metastatic but also the early stage setting. So there are uh, several trials being designed using antibody drug conjugates in patients who don't have a pathologic complete response to neoadjuvant therapy and most Neoadjuvant therapy now includes pembrolizumab as part of our regimen. So that's, I think, an incredibly important approach and also trying to minimize the amount of treatment we give and individualize it, optimize therapy for the patient's own tumor response, both by testing shorter, less intensive regimens in the neoadjuvant setting and also by maybe stopping the treatment we give post neoadjuvant setting, like not giving Pembro to patients who have a pathologic complete response to try and reduce the immune toxicities and cost. So that's one exciting area. In the metastatic setting, we're looking at trying to to give antibody drug conjugates earlier with new partners. Uh, you know, the concept of giving ADCs with these checkpoint inhibitors is really interesting and is being studied. There are new agents targeting different pathways we're trying to understand the benefit for in triple negative breast cancer. Um, and all of that, I think, is really critical because this is still such a big unmet need. In hormone receptor positive disease, obviously we're looking for additional data even to support uh, the use of CDK4-6 inhibitors. The Natalie trial looked at ribociclib for three years. We're thinking we might see the first data next year uh, in, again, high-risk patient population, although defined differently than Monarch E. Um, so that will be very interesting. There's increasing data that's helping us to understand which patients with hormone receptor positive disease can benefit from immunotherapy and chemotherapy in the neoadjuvant setting, and I hope that we're able to apply that data more broadly to clinical trials to try and understand how who is going to benefit from this more intensive approach. And maybe we could substitute the chemotherapy we're giving now with antibody drug conjugates in that subset of patients who already benefit from chemo and spare them the intensity of treatment. So that's actually a really exciting area too, and we can give these ADCs with checkpoint inhibitors, so that's great. Um, so that's another really exciting area. We're moving the antibody drug conjugates earlier in the lines of metastatic uh, treatment and trying to understand HER2 low and how low you can go is a huge area discussed a lot at San Antonio. And I think in another year, we'll have a lot more data on this as well, although we may not have the answers yet. Um, all of the ADCs are moving into the first line setting as I mentioned, also in the post-neoadjuvant setting um, in specific subgroups of patients, and I think that will be really interesting. And then in HER2-positive disease, you know, uh, TDXD, our amazing antibody drug conjugate with amazing results here at San Antonio, uh, 2022 uh, is being moved into the first-line setting and is being studied as post-neoadjuvant and neoadjuvant therapy in HER2-positive disease. You know, we're looking at different combinations to try and prevent the development of brain metastases and treat them more um, earlier and better so that we can help patients live longer in that setting, but also not have these unexpected brain metastases. So, um, and then I think, you know, the other thing that's really important is that there's been an increasing focus on safety and patient reported outcomes. And that's really great because we're taking some of these new agents and being able to understand the safety and how to manage the safety of the drugs earlier. That's, a, to me, very exciting too, that we're, um, you know, really trying to incorporate Incorporate patient reported outcomes and safety and meld them together to try and understand who's at risk and to try and manage these toxicities earlier uh, to improve the quality of life of our patients.